Although never reaching the heights of Frankie pop stardom, the Bunnymen had had a substantial career, but by the late 80s, Ian McCulloch was becoming disillusioned. A lot of the mystery had gone by. We were still doing good gigs and stuff. We did a tour of Brazil, which we probably never played better ever, you know. Um, and it, it was a really successful tour, but it, it, again, it wasn't... It didn't feel as good as playing to maybe 200 people in 1979. It was at this point, you know, Mac was completely separate to the rest of us. Like, we'd go on the tour bus in America and he'd fly so he could stay in bed another couple of hours. You know, ridiculous, stupid things like that, you know. And he was, he was uh, separating himself all the time. You know, I never used to see him, except on stage. He, he never used, he stopped coming to sound checks as well, you know, which was, like, weird, you know. He was starting to think he was, like, God, <laughs> you know. Even God has to sound check sometimes. I just felt something bad was looming, you know, within the group. You know, we'd do a few fights here and there, me and Les, usually. There was one sudden massive one where <laughs> I won't go into it, but it was, it was quite funny looking back, but it was well heavy, you know, and uh, he's a strong sod as well. And he, he was sort of head-butted me, killed, but uh, I got up, you know. Well, I was, I was actually already down when he head-butted me. But uh, it was just uh, all that kind of stuff going on. It was like, oh, man, this isn't... It's got to be more fun than this, you know? There was a phone call where I sort of said, look, we're carrying on. And he just said, you know, he called me a twat and that, and <laughs> that was that, you know? And I said, well, that's what's happening, see ya. You know? Just said, you bastard, you know? And, uh, and Will said, well, some of my favourite groups have done that, you know? Gone on. And I said, who? He said, the Buzzcocks. And I said... <laughs> And then I said, who else? And he said, Pink Floyd. I said, yeah, great, um, one of my favourites, you know. So then, and he said, someone else, though. Some real bizarre group, like, so then, Mud or someone, you know. And I just I hung up on him. I wasn't going to do it until the um, bloke at the record company said, why don't you get a new singer? And uh, I thought, because it's the sort of thing you sort of mum would say, isn't it, you know? Oh, he was a rubbish guy, and you sing that, you know. You think, oh, shut up, mum, sort of thing. <laughs> you don't understand. But because this bloke at the record company suggested it, I thought, what the hell, you know? If they're suggesting it, maybe it is feasible. Genesis did it. <laughs> the the it was sort of maintaining something, but it wasn't really going anywhere. And over here, it was just seen as a total embarrassment, like. You know, we never got wrote or written about at all, like, you know, in uh, the papers. Just ignored us completely. It was like, what do you remember that, Mac? Nine Danker. <laughs> <laughs> you know? The breakup was bitter, and Will and Mac didn't speak for a year, and only then because of the death in a motorbike accident of their drummer, Pete De Freitas. When Pete died the night that we found out, we all... I went round, you know, we hadn't spoken for a year, then or nine months or something, and I went round and it was all really emotional and stuff. And then we went to the funeral and then didn't speak for the next three years or whatever, three and a half. Will Sargent and Ian McCulloch are now working together again under the new name, Electrofiction. It's only since being back with Will, really, that I've got the focus back and, you know, my direction, the direction of my life is kind of... I feel like it's written out for me again. He's become like the old Mac again now. You know, he's, he's, he's back being all right now, like, you know. I don't know how long it'll last. But, you know, he is all right now, you know.